this free to play player has just broken 6 billion kill points with a highest power ever of 79 million so today we're going to take a deep dive into their account and see what commanders they're using what their equipment looks like all of their armaments speed ups resources and everything what's going on guys cheers now apg rodris rodris i'm so sorry if i'm mispronouncing the name is a 100 free to play player from kingdom 2061 and they reached out to me asking if i'd be interested in showing off their account and after taking a closer look I was super impressed with this player and luckily for me they were able to quickly send over a video for you guys as well as a bunch of tips for free to play players on how you can get an account that looks like this so make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video where we're going to go over that now if you enjoy videos like this where I go over a free to play player account that is as insane as this make sure you just drop a quick thumbs up on the video it helps out the channel a ton it pushes this video out into the algorithm and we're also really close to 50 thousand subscribers so if you're not subbed go ahead and consider that down below now the first thing we're going to look at is the kill breakdown he has 3.7 billion tier 5 kill points and 2.2 billion tier 4 kill points this is extremely impressive for a free to play player you could also see here he's rocking the Germany civilization I do recommend this civilization to every free to play player this is going to give you faster action speed recovery which as you can see right here he has spent down nearly all of his action points this is absolutely crucial as you'll see later in the tips section of this video but you have to be grinding down your ap every single day as a free to play player in order to sort of keep up with the low spenders and the dolphins of the game also in the late game with the troop training speed on germany it's really going to help you out a ton when you go into kvk so just keep that in mind here once again we can see his highest power ever is 79 million with 24 million dead troops pretty impressive stuff there and 25.6 billion resources gathered and 96,000 alliance helps really respectable stats down here we love to see that just for comparison he has more dead troops than I do and he also has more resources gathered and alliance helps than me and I do believe my account is a little bit older than his as well in fact if we take a look here his consecutive login days are 1068 I have over 1500 login days so my account is over a year older than his so you can see just how much he's been grinding this entire time he's also vip 17 as a free-to-play player which is super impressive we're going to talk about that a little bit later in the video we can also see at the top here that he has 77 almost 78 thousand gems which is super impressive and a little bit light on the resources here so that's not that surprising we'll talk about farm accounts as well later in the video now I just wanted to pause here for a moment to show you guys that he does still have the Minamoto logo up in the top right corner and it, I do believe that yes he does show that he has not purchased anything in the shop here he still has Minamoto he has not purchased the growth fund at all this player is 100 free to play which is often a question that I get in these videos a lot of players just do not believe some of the accounts that I show here on the channel and I'm always very clear with you guys if the player has spent five dollars or ten dollars on the growth fund or something like that but this player is undoubtedly free to play next he's going to show off the commanders that he has on this account and this is really impressive stuff here we have a fully expertise Zhang Yu Nevsky Boudica Prime he even went as far as expertising his Guan Yu and Alexander which is great we also see here a level 60 Cao Cao we'll have to take a look at what those skills look like he also went ahead and expertised Ramses not sure if that's still a great strategy we also see here that CPO Prime is expertised quite low on the power ranking meaning that he probably has no equipment or armaments on here which means he's using CPO as a secondary so Guan CPO is probably his only infantry March that he's typically using but we're gonna go over all of his marches later in the video as well here we can see some really impressive equipment on his Zhang Yu we have the hellish wasteland chest and boots here for the two-piece set bonus that gives you I believe three percent additional cavalry health we have Navarre's control really great health piece on the gloves as well as ash of the dawn legs here another great health piece for your cavalry we also have pride of the Khan as the helmet here really premium helmet that's from the kvk shop everything here has an iconic crystal which is really important and finally we have heart of the saint as the weapon and we have a talented ring of doom for cavalry here on the accessory slot as well as the horn of fury for faster rage cycles 
the rage cycle for Zangyu is already insane so this set of equipment is really high dps super high damage output for this and again i cannot emphasize how important it is to have the iconic crystals embedded into these pieces which is why you really do want to start to go for all legendary equipment when you get into the late game moving on we see really good equipment here on nevsky as well this implies that these two commanders are not typically paired together so we're gonna have to see what the actual pairings are going to be here but we see another pride of the con on the helmet here with that iconic crystal super super nice we also have again the chest piece and the boots of the hellish wasteland two-piece set bonus here navar's control once again incredible gloves that you can get from the chests in the game very free to play friendly legendary gloves here we also have the gladiators legs this is really good with the talent here it's only like i think half a point or one and a half points away from the ash of the dawn when you do have that talent on here so a really great piece this looks very similar to how my nevsky looks except i don't have the pride of the color here we can see another ring of doom here with the iconic crystal and we have a talented silent trial to further reduce the rage of the enemy we love to see this again heart of the saints on the weapons despite this set having two additional purples this is almost identical to the previous set this is a very very powerful cavalry set and it's much cheaper than the previous one we saw as well next we can see Boudica's equipment here and my god the equipment is so good on this player's account we have the chest and the gloves from the legendary archer set the chest is going to give you a really nice bonus to your archer health which you desperately need for archers and of course he gets the two piece set bonus which i believe is three percent additional attack for archers he also kept the helmet and the legs from the revival set this is also both defense items really good stuff here and again two piece set bonus is really nice it's an additional three percent attack here which we love to see now we have hydra's blast over here this is the kvk shop weapon super good for archers this is like 25 percent archer defense we love to see that on this plus we have the horn of fury here this is going to increase the rage cycle for Boudica, which is really nice a couple more iconic crystals and this is going to be even better finally we have the extra march speed for archers here on the flag accessory probably just a filler item but it's also really important that Boudica has march speed so she can keep up not only with the other cavalry marches that this player is using but to try to run away from unfavorable matchups in the open fields if they do end up getting trapped i'm going to assume that this player is using ysg as the secondary to Boudica, which is even more important to have that uh that march speed but we'll see here in just a moment next we move on to the infantry set and this is a really good free to play budget build except he also has the hammer of sun and moon now that is a really expensive piece to put in the weapon slot here for infantry but it's a piece that i have as well I'm, i mean whew, man that that is he is all in on that weapon slot there we have the set helmet and boots here from the infantry set to get the two piece set bonus we also have the Karak's humility legs which gives you a really nice health bonus as well as the talented epic gloves I believe that is defense we also see here a ring of doom and a dagger both of these accessories having the iconic crystals embedded in them as well I do think dagger is the right play here for his Guan Yu this is probably his tankiest army in the open fields considering that it's infantry and probably using his CPO prime so having your tanky army with a debuffing accessory such as the dagger is really really nice we love the hope cloak on the chest too as well uh this is once again a very friendly free to play piece because you can get this if you're lucky from your crystal keys and even if you only craft it once without any talents or anything it is significantly better than the quinn soul attack piece that you would be replacing it with so we love to see this build this is really really nice i i i do question the hammer a little bit because of just how expensive it is guys this is such an expensive piece it's unbelievable and it is infantry attack now this hammer is much better than the blue shield that gives you 10 percent infantry health because you can also put an iconic crystal in this as well so it is what it is how much better it is than the talented Sakura Fubuki I I'm not really sure but nonetheless this is basically done he never has to worry about another infantry weapon for the rest of the game pretty much so over time he's probably going to get a lot of value out of it here we can see his equipment on Alexander the Great and I'm going to go into more detail later as to what exactly he's doing with Alexander the Great uh obviously with equipment on here that means it's a primary commander but you can see we have two pieces of the windswept set we have two pieces of the epic talented infantry 
gear we also have the flag once again talented for infantry so extra march speed there is important the talented blue shield is exceptional for 90 percent of players i would say who are using an infantry march and we have the i think this is the scarlet hounds boots down here i think that gives you uh infantry health if i'm not mistaken yeah i believe that's five and a half percent infantry health which honestly alexander the great does need as much health as he can get which here he is getting from his weapon legs and boots which is great he also gets the two-piece set bonus from the windswept but i think primarily he has this here for the extra march speed which is really great on alexander the great because alex has so much march speed for infantry it's actually one of the best things about alexander the great so this is probably one of the fastest infantry commanders that you'll ever see with this build right here here he shows off a five four five five cao cao which is extremely impressive honestly he is almost completely finished with this gold key commander and i don't know if he's really going to have a great use for it other than maybe doing a fort rallies and obviously doing uh chaining barbs but cao cao is definitely one of the better gold key commanders in the game so it's nice to see that he's made some good progress on this over here we can see a few more of the commanders that he has expertise and we do see the joan of arc prime which is absolutely huge for this account obviously he's probably using this with nevsky if i were to bet he also does have the expertise ysg and an expertise charles martel which we absolutely love to see that is very very good we're gonna go over his commander pairings later in the video but uh you can already start to see what is probably some of the more logical pairs that he is uh is using here he shows off a 5511 constantine so he probably invested in this commander a long time ago but even if you did this is still a very good investment for your sunset canyon free-to-play players can get a lot of nice value in sunset canyon and constantine at 5511 is one of the best investments for that game mode now i don't typically recommend you invest in a commander for sunset canyon specifically but the fact that he does have him at least will give him a ton of value in that regard probably not going to use constantine ever again for pvp also it's worth noting that constantine can help you pretty significantly in other pve scenarios such as the arms training lohar or arms master lohar i don't remember what the name is but also constantine buffing your nearby marches will be really good for things like uh, trial of the ko Kurok, as well as the Kurok ceremony so uh, there's still some pretty good pve uses for constantine as well you can see down here he also has an expertise el cid definitely another really good uh gold key archer commander probably never going to use it to be honest with you but uh the fact that he has him done is really cool here we can see he has a 5111 richard which is definitely where i would recommend most players if not all players especially free to play stop right here it's also worth noting that he has no equipment on his Richard at all so if he is chaining with this Richard he's chaining completely naked which is really interesting I would say some of the higher level barbs in kvk you probably want at least something on the Richard just to just to minimize the hospitalizations but if I were to be a betting man I would say he probably just takes his Alexander the Great build and puts it on his Richard when he's not in war that would be what I assume he's doing here also no armaments here very interesting stuff as well but yes 5111 Richard great for chaining with YSG secondary here we could see a William at 5551 definitely a great place to stop with your William I would say 90 percent or 95 percent players should probably stop here as well so my assumption is that he's using a Nevsky primary with Joan of Arc secondary and a Zhang Yu primary with William secondary that's how I'm assuming he's breaking this down he didn't even put talents on the William here or or his Julius Caesar or Mehmed I wonder what the strategy is there if he's artificially keeping his power slightly lower by not filling those in no idea there but yes William is a very good budget build and I mean you're getting a lot of value out of a very small amount of sculptures here I actually talked about William quite a bit in my video that I recently posted where I talk about the best 5551 legendary commanders in the game if you guys missed that video go ahead and check it out on the channel I think a lot of new players will learn a lot from that video and how you can get really good commanders like William for a fraction of the cost of an expertise now he's gonna scroll through all the different commanders that he has here so you can see he's actually unlocked Nev Abu, Harold we have Saladin here I wonder if his Saladin is a 5551 you can see he's got Tamiris here you see he did unlock Margaret pretty much every commander in the game every legendary it seems like he has even some of these uh mightiest governor commanders you see Zenobia down here as well Amana Torre we see have YSS I mean he's got pretty much everything here which is quite impressive to be honest with you again even all the mightiest governor commanders he has the only commanders that he doesn't have are the useless ones and the ones you have to spend money on such as 
has Minamoto, Barka, obviously he doesn't have those. Uh, he doesn't have, it looks like Wu or Moctezuma, although he does have some sculptures of it. Uh, I wonder if he just accumulates a small number of these Mightiest Governor sculptures every time it comes around. You know, he gets two, three, five sculptures just to basically unlock them. I'm not really sure, but you can see down here, this looks like Pakal and Bertrand that he also does not have unlocked. But other than that, he has 81 commanders. So he has pretty much everything in the game and definitely anything that he would need to have. And yes, he is once again, flexing that his Minamoto is absolutely locked. He has spent nothing on this game. Next, he shows off his armaments on these armies. So you can see here he's using wedge formation for his Zhang Yu makes a lot of sense here. 4.2% cavalry attack, 4.7% cavalry defense and 5.2% cavalry health, which is great. He has 0.6% all damage. Now you can see here that he also has resistant here on one of his armaments. But for those of you who don't know, resistant gives him two and a half percent extra counter attack damage. So that's really good for Zhang Yu as well, because he is one of the most targeted commanders in the open field because he is very squishy. I would almost argue that he should put his best armaments and his best gear on his Nevsky because I feel like more players target Zhang Yu because it's just typically it's a glass cannon. So you're going to get to kill it pretty quickly, but he would probably know better than me here. We can see his Nevsky has two inscriptions on his armaments. He has 3.9% cavalry attack, 2.2% defense and 1.9% cavalry health. He also has 2.3% all damage, which is really, really good. Obviously wedge formation once again now well clad and vitality well clad gives you another 3.5 percent troop defense which is not reflected in the armament information over here which honestly i wish they would include it so that way you can actually see the real total is 5.7 percent cavalry defense which is nice now the inscription i have for vitality is on a purple item which gives me two and a half percent extra health next we move on to Boudica's armaments three inscriptions here my god 4.9 percent are Archer defense, 1.5% Archer health, 2.9% Archer march speed, which again, we talked about is really important for, for Boudica. She also is in wedge formation. The striker inscription gives her an additional 1% normal attack damage. Robust gives you two and a half percent troop health as well, which as you can see here is on Boudica. It looks like armored is giving them two and a half percent extra defense here on their Boudica as well. The fact that it takes me so much time to look up what each one of these inscriptions does is the system is just so overcomplicated, man. It's, it's just too much, bro. It's too much. Nonetheless, Guan Yu has 1.2% infantry attack, 3.5% infantry defense and 2.8% infantry health with 2.1% infantry march speed as well. And 1.8% all damage. Now he also has robust and brawler for the inscriptions, robust, giving him another two and a half percent extra health and brawler increasing skill damage by 1.5%. Once again, I'd really love to see that here in the breakdown it would be much easier to understand and way more clear come on Lilith what are you doing why has this got to be so hard all right so that's it for his armaments here we're going to see what commander pairs he's actually running and you can see in his first slot he has Guan Yu with CPO Prime obviously makes a ton of sense there second slot is as I expected his Boudica with YSG I assume that in the past he used Ramses with YSG but since Ramses has sort of been you know outclassed by Boudica in every single way it does make sense that he would be running this instead third slot is as we expected Nevsky with Joan of Arc Prime absolutely great combination there his fourth slot is his Zhang Yu with William also as I did expect these are all exceptionally good marches and then finally we see his fifth slot is actually filled with Alexander the Great and Martel secondary. Now we're going to go over in the tips section why he uses this army and when he uses this army, because obviously he does not use this army all the time because it is clearly far weaker than the rest of the armies that he has access to. But there are some niche scenarios where he may use this army. And we'll talk about that later. Next, we're going to be able to take a look at some of the items here in his inventory. You can see a ton of the level one resource pack sees this. I believe you get this primarily from, well, you get it from a lot of different things, but you also get this from an expertise Cleopatra as well. He has five season of conquest coins still, despite having all those different weapons and everything really great stuff. To be honest with you, 144,000 coins as well. You see, he basically has used all of his uh, gem tokens. He has over a million 
of the 1000 food tokens really crazy stuff there some nice uh nice stuff in his inventory he's got even more of the 1000 wood tokens and obviously he has the least amount of gold that is typically the most scarce resource in the game obviously especially when you're fighting with uh tier fives oh I was actually wrong he does have more gold as he scrolls down but still he definitely has less gold than everything else he does have 33 of the crystals saved up here for the next kvk of course next we have the commander re-release chests it looks like he's got a couple of these as well as the infantry one I imagine he'll use this for Tamiris and he probably doesn't really have any use for the infantry one at this point because he already expertised Alexander the Great we have 12 of what I assume are Ethelflaed chests over here he's clearly expertised all of the legendary gatherers solid amount of teleports here 510 silver keys saved up 264 gold keys saved up 274 crystal keys saved up and 29 of the legendary chests saved up here as well a couple thousand of the 50 ap pots 187 of the 100 pots two of the 1000 pots so here you can see that he definitely does grind down his ap especially during uh kbk and probably marauders as well 3500 sages testimony saved up over here and here he scrolls through just some different decorations he's got 116 of the hammer saved up for the hunt for history 268 legendary commander sculptures saved up so he's obviously saving up for whatever the next commander is going to be moving on to the speed ups obviously tons of building speed ups saved up here we have some uh, of the training speed ups not too many but a solid chunk to be fair tons of research speed ups saved as well pretty useless stuff we have some healing speed ups although it looks like he has used down pretty much all of them most likely in kvk and a pretty respectable amount of universal speed ups my god 71,001 minutes he has 11,000 of the hour speed ups really interesting stuff here that's a lot I mean whew, really really good to see I mean given how many kill points he has and how good his account is I you would expect him to be relatively low on speed ups but he's uh he's in a pretty good spot here to be honest with you guys so we could take a look here he does have a couple of the troop training uh expansions as far as equipment goes he has 13 legendary chests 85 of the epic chests he's got a couple of the uh pick one epic chests and a legendary chest here as well obviously a little bit low on the material so he probably can craft uh one or two good things at this point yeah I think the kvk weapons here took a significant amount of of his materials if I'm being honest with you and pride of the con as well those are all very expensive uh pieces but here we're just getting a nice little overview of everything that he has which is really impressive stuff we could see as Matilda actually has his uh his gathering set to over here as well as the purple gathering accessory we have Joan of Arc uh with some blue gathering stuff here as well and then we have some gray gathering pieces on the other gatherers so that is pretty much everything here he's got some blueprints for some legendary pieces three iconic crystals remaining um he probably should use this on some of the pieces that he already has but I wonder if he's saving them to see if he gets a talent on something upcoming that is definitely possible here we can see a solid number of purple materials honestly which is nice to see a little bit of blues here as well so that is good it looks like he's combined all the grays so there's that and that is everything on his account now let's jump into some of the tips that he gave us for free to play players if you're wondering what order he invested in commanders we're gonna go over that really quickly so first he unlocked Richard and got him to 5111 for barb chaining with Ethel fled obviously in the early game then he expertise YSG this is basically the path that I've recommended most people at this point then he worked on Alexander the Great in KVK2. He can only fight with non expertise Alex YSG with epic equipment. Then he finished Alexander the Great in KVK3 with YSG and slightly better gear. Then he did a 5511 Constantine, which he does sort of regret, he says. And he tried to go for a 5155 Guan, and of course it went wrong. So he expertised him. In his first season of Conquest, he had two relatively strong marches, he says, with epic gear. He used either Ethelfled with YSG or YSG with El Cid for his archer sets. And then he used Guan Alex, obviously, with the same equipment that he actually used in KVK3 because he was spending more of his time on his other set most of the time he said he only used Guan Alex in the fields and his YSG March was kind of just secondary then he said he expertised Ramses and he does say that Nebu probably would have been a better choice but as a free-to-play player wheel commanders are just easier to obtain and he upgraded a few pieces of his equipment to gold he said he finished Ramses right at the end of his fifth KVK and he bought the Archer weapon because it was his second heroic anthem KVK with over 30 million kills however he did lose both of those kvks unfortunately in his sixth kvk he only upgraded a few pieces of his equipment to gold got 30 million kills with guan alex and ramses ysg and basically just saved all of his materials and gold heads 
for whatever the next meta was going to be at the beginning of his seventh kvk he expertised xy and nevsky and made all of the cavalry equipment that we saw on his xy which you can see on the screen and they did actually win this kvk he had over 45 million kills for that kvk which is insane he saved a ton of materials coins and heads for cpo to improve infantry equipment and he also said that he has about 50 million deads majority from kvk and has never been zeroed from an opponent he estimates about 50 percent of his deaths are tier 4 and 50 percent are tier 5. he said he got tier 5 units on day 210 and was probably the first free to play to do it in his alliance by months of course that is really impressive a very low number and he did say that that was during covid lockdown so he was playing all the time a little bit more information about him he started in kingdom 1820 in an alliance called apg and he'd said that there were a couple of whales in that alliance which was nice that obviously helps free to play players a ton getting some gold chests every once in a while he did say kvk one and two he was pretty much just a farmer and i think that's a completely realistic expectation for fully free to play players usually their accounts are not in fighting position or or condition for kvk one and maybe even kvk two because when you're fighting and you don't have tier fives then you're kind of just slowing down the progress of your account to getting to tier five and actually being useful so it makes sense that you would be a farmer in the first two kvks he also said that he did use some gems for books of the covenant but he grinded out all of the arrows of resistance that he needed as far as some other tips he said his biggest tip is to plan things ahead you have to know that as free to play you have limited gems materials and heads you have to be very very efficient and the best way is to be patient and plan ahead your investments do the math and when you have what's required follow the plan i would say there is no specific tip for every free to play every account is different and for some investing in a particular commander may be the way to go and for others that same commander could be a catastrophe for instance for me gold heads are not so important anymore i get enough daily to stay in the meta and if i do the events so my gems have been going to vip materials and blueprints for the last year however for another free to play with a younger account maybe entering season of conquest he needs to really hoard gems so he can 100 spin wheels as soon as he enters season of conquest as an example also another thing he would advise is do your own research for example i remember some time ago everyone believed it was better to focus on a troop type and there were people advising it to free to play and for me i did my math and i thought it was more efficient in terms of materials resources and troops to have the best of each troop type so i decided to stick to that plan it's really important to listen to others in this game if you want to do well but also even more important is to do your own research check more than one person's opinion and this is very true of course in the very beginning of rise of kingdoms and a lot you know a lot of content creators including myself always recommended to go all in on one troop type sort of min maxing that and for the longest time that was true and even still today that is quite true especially if you're a rally or garrison lead but as we can see the meta has evolved to having one of at least one of each uh different troop type because some of the newer commanders are just so good you can't afford to not have them moving on he says there's one thing you really need to do as a free to play if you want to compete with whales that is unfortunately barb chaining and farming i could be doing better in my account if i had more farms but i'm too lazy to do it i have two farms ideally i should have four to five and about barb chaining you should be chaining when you're not in war or doing events if you play the game three hours a day and aren't chaining any barbs then you're doing something wrong i mean if you want to have in a good account i don't play the game so much lately because real life keeps me busy but i did a lot of chaining in the past when it came to gems i do farm gems but i think it should never get to the point where it causes you stress like you having to be ready to jump from node to node sometimes it's not worth it i do it more casually lately if i see some around i'll gather them or sometimes in kvk because the nodes are bigger also i normally use mixed tier 4 tier 5 armies around 30 percent tier four 70 percent tier five ratio but ideally you have enough farm so that you can use full t5 not my case though i would like to give a shout out to my first alliance in this game apg back in my first kingdom in 1820 we stick together for a very long time shout out to my kingdom 2061 a one alliance kingdom full of crazy badass fighters and to you i guess to me for letting me show my account to other players and for being the best concert okay 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 listen that's enough you don't gotta lie to me okay i'm just kidding I, I do appreciate that thank you very much he said you can also mention that anyone free to play or not please feel free to ask me questions in game chat I'll try to answer as best as I can I would love to help others I don't use social media nor discord very much so if they write me here I probably won't see it if you want to reach out to Rodris you can see his governor ID right here you can send him a mail in game please be respectful okay if you do decide to do that I know you guys will I trust you now this is where he clarified his Alexander the Great March he said normally he uses his fifth March for picking up a rune or for reinforcing something but if the kingdom really really needs field presence i add my alex martel 
as the 5th March but to be honest I rarely ever do it now the last piece of information that he added here was that some people have said you must be buying resources from sellers or you must be getting tons of gold chests from your Alliance but neither of them are true although I have no way to prove it obviously I've always been in seed a kingdom slash Imperium kvks obviously people spend there but nothing crazy and now I'm in 2061 been here for two kvks which is a tier B kingdom and we do have a couple of whales so I'm getting now more gold chests than in the past but I'd say two to three on average per day so not that much some days we don't get any and about the buying resources I have no way to show it to you but you can imagine if I don't spend on materials or other things why would I spend on resources very true he also has two farms also I have never migrated back so no easy kills for me he's talking about migrating back to season two of kvk but there's one thing I forgot to mention that is very important how you fight is very important to get more kills there is some skill involved when it comes to murder ball fights PC version helps a lot this is very true I use the PC version myself for most of kvk managing your armies well in the field plays a huge role that's it I just wanted to give you as much info as possible to motivate other free to play if I've been able to do it everyone can get a nice account too even free to play low spenders 12 inch is a great example too he may catch up with me one day that man is a grinder everybody knows and loves 12 inch pvp if you guys haven't followed 12 inch pvp here on youtube you definitely should do that especially free to play he has a ton of really good free to play content and guides and he's also live streaming very often so if you have questions for a free to play that's similar to him and you want to talk in a live stream format i highly recommend 12 inch pvp and that's going to do it for this video i just want to give a huge shout out to apg rodris i really apologize if i'm mispronouncing your name but this account is absolutely incredible and the fact that he went through painstaking detail to give us all these tips for free to play players to inspire you guys and to prove that he is in fact completely free to play is super super impressive his account is more impressive than mine he obviously plays a lot more than me but you know credit where credit is due huge shout out thank you for showing off your account to me and all of my viewers with that being said if you enjoyed this video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this into the algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it and other free to play players may learn from him comment down below your thoughts on his account i would love to hear from you guys down there of course be respectful and if you're not you're just gonna get banned subscribe to the channel if you're new here and click the bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace